Space Wizards, Plastic Spacemen, and Rebel Princesses. This is Todd Hoffman and Trent Hoffman, and you're listening to Big T and Little T, a Star Wars podcast. Welcome to episode 107. Today we're talking about part 6 of the new limited series, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Unfortunately, Trent couldn't join me, but we will have a full breakdown of the series coming up with me and Trent. Currently, I'm in a bunker no not really um in uh in door michigan on a family vacation doing a little rogue pirating podcasting that's what it's all about had to talk about some obi-wan kenobi but enjoying some serious downtime with the fam and it's always good to geek out a little bit about star wars so here we go we're gonna get jump right into it we're talking about part six the finale of Obi-Wan Kenobi. All right, so we jump right into Tatooine. Uh, we know Reva is alive. It didn't take that long to understand that Reva is looking for Luke. She's still very much injured, but um, Owen gets a tip from some dude, some merchant, and is like, yo, we got to talk. So now he knows that Reva is uh, on the hunt for him and that um, we get our first sighting of Baru. Hello, Baru. White Sun Lars is in the house, which was awesome. And so basically, Baru jumps right into action and says, Hey, we got to take him. We can't wait for anybody. We got, we're got. we not going to run. We're going to make our stand here. This is our home, which I love. I just wish there was a little bit more uh, interaction between Baru and Luke. That's what I was looking for. And it just seems a little rushed. Like, hey, man, it's the first time we're seeing Baru. Let's get Baru some screen time. I don't know. These are things that I just think, overall, from a Disney perspective, we're just missing a little bit more time to flush out characters. Uh, I just wish it wasn't as cookie cut, if you will. All right. So now. We got Roken back on the ship with Obi-Wan. We got Vader increasing forward firepower and just trying to blow up the the rebel ship. Leia's a little scared. We got her play with Lola, distracting the kids. And Obi-Wan just knows that this is happening. And it's basically like, yo, I got to get out of here, you know. Um, so now we are back at the Los homestead. Um, Owen basically is telling Luke it's Tusken Raiders. We got to be careful. Um, and we have um, basically Kenobi at this point uh, shoots out of the Devastator, I guess if you will, or shoots out of um, the Rebel ship. And and I love this little bit with the Grand Inquisitor, and it's not much. But it's awesome. And he's like, hey, the Rebels are right here. That's the bigger prize. And Vader is so focused on Obi-Wan. He's like, after Obi-Wan, you know. And it's like, oh my gosh, what are you doing? That's so stupid. But he does it anyways. And it could have just cr- uh, crushed the Rebels. But that's okay. That's the whole butterfly effect. So um, now we're back at the Lars homestead. And we have kind of like... Similar to where we have two things going on, or three things going on most of the time in Star Wars. Um, we have Reva searching for Luke and getting to Lars' homestead. We have Vader landing on the spare moon. We really don't know much about where they land, but basically there's Vader goes after uh, Kenobi. Um, and we see Owen and Baru kind of open up a, a fire on Reva, and then we go back to Kenobi and um, basically we have a very very cool fight with Vader but then it inter- interlocks um, between Lars and now Lars is trying to take out Reva and it's this whole thing it's great 
Um, but um, basically, Reva pushes uh, or gets um, sees Luke kind of squirt out of the homestead, and we have Reva chasing after Luke and Owen and and Beru are kind of left flat-footed in a sense where it's like, okay, now it's just Luke. Um, so now we got Kobe, Kenobi and Vader. I dig all this. It's great. It's a fantastic fight. We got Vader um, taking out um, kind of Obi-Wan and like burying him. And then um, Obi-Wan is like thinking about the future and kind of think of the past and trying to get up the muster of courage to get out of this thing and he gets out and moves rocks and then Obi-Wan goes full blown Jedi and just starts throwing rocks at Obi-Wan and or throwing rocks at Vader and it's so super cool and then um, it, it, it's basically I think of it like a wrestling match it's definitely heavy Vader first and then it's heavy Obi-Wan um, and then really at the end Obi-Wan kind of gives out this knockout punch and slices Anakin Vader's helmet and this to me is just money in the bank it's so freaking cool we have this really cool kind of um, voiceover with Anakin and Vader uh, kind of talking at the same time um, and there's just this really cool piece of dialogue where um, Anakin's like don't worry uh, Obi-Wan I killed Anakin Skywalker and it's kind of like prefacing what really threw me off with Obi-Wan when he lied to Darth Vader or lied to Luke um, but really it's Anakin saying I took down Anakin Skywalker I'm no longer that I'm Darth Vader and Anakin is dead and then Obi-Wan says this line you know like oh, now my friend is truly dead and it's like oh my gosh or truly gone or something like that and it's just like oh my gosh it's just so crazy and so that is just super super sad and I'm just kind of heart wrenching there so now we got Reva uh, essentially having these kind of flashbacks of the Jedi Purge, and she's about to kill Luke. It's not looking good. Um, and then it kind of flashes back to Obi-Wan, and basically Obi-Wan lets Vader go and, and, and says Darth and... He doesn't kill Anakin again, but he kind of just puts it in the past, if you will. Like, Vader, I love Anakin. I just love him. He's just so passionate, and it's like, but he's blinded by this rage. And I think a lot of it is he puts a lot of blame on Obi-Wan, but really it's himself that makes the choices, and it takes all the way to Luke helping him out at the end to figure that out like yo you did this don't and you know he sees the same mistakes that luke's making with the emperor and the emperor saying the same thing to darth vader it's a whole thing it's a whole thing but that's a totally different discussion but i just love how obi-wan again just leaves him and just like okay this is over um yeah and so Obi-Wan, I think, cuts the right side. I believe Anakin, or it's Ahsoka that cuts, cuts left, but then takes Luke to take the full helmet off, which is very, very cool. I don't know. That's a deep cut. I don't know. No pun intended, but it's pretty amazing. Um, yeah, I just loved everything about that. So then, now we got Reva. So... Now, Obi-Wan flies back to Tatooine, and this is where I feel like it um, it could have been a little bit slower pace. I just felt like all this stuff was rushed. Um, and so now we see Rafa come back 
to with Luke just how Anakin came back with Jimmy and they're all like you have Aunt Beru, well Aunt Beru, Lars and Obi-Wan just devastated but then Luke kind of comes to consciousness it's great Reva is basically like um she just doesn't know what to do you know she's like I failed to avenge her fellow you know younglings deaths at Darth Vader's hand but now only one's like hey you didn't fail it's time to you brought peace and honor by showing mercy and yeah it just like Reva just sheds some tears and lays down the double bladed lightsaber and that's it she just basically sets her free I wish there was just a little bit more again with Reva but it's still very cool so we have that which is awesome um, and then, um, now we're back at Fortress Vader or Mustafar, love it, and now we got a fully repaired Darth Vader, um, and we get Emperor Palpatine, Darth Sidious shows up, um, and basically he's dispatching more probe droids to find Kenobi, um, Emperor's like, hey my friend, you seem a little agitated, um, but Vader responds and basically says, he's like, Kenobi means nothing to me. I, and just basically my loyalty will rise with the Emperor. But the Emperor knows it's still personal with Obi-Wan. And it, I think it keeps him grounded and makes... Again, Anakin's anchored on that and he's, he can't get past his passions, you know. So now um, we see Leia kind of getting all dressed up and um at the end of their little departure obi-wan um gives her uh, gives him a, a, a her holster so she puts her holster on she's got some of these kind of like almost like driving gloves like these these pilot gloves and her princess dress and it's so cute and basically uh Let's just get it out there. Jimmy Smith's Bail Organa is a national treasure. Um, I just love how he just is like, hey, we're going to do this together. And uh, Leia's like, okay, let's do it. Let's change the world. And, um, yeah, it's just it's super cool. And he's like, okay, who are we going to meet? But it turns out it's Obi-Wan. And this is pretty much like, you know, not only was it kind of like, get emotional with the Vader. Obi-Wan stuff, it just tears me off even more. But then they have a very um, kind, very cool conversation. And, and basically Obi-Wan's like, hey, I did know your mother. Um, and she tell he tells Leia she was wise, discerning, kind-hearted, uh, which she describes her qualities from her mother. And then Leah, Leah is also passionate, fearless, and fortright, fortright, which is Anakin. Oh my gosh, it's just so good. It just makes me, it's so cool. It's super cool. So, um, but, you know, basically reassure her that, like, hey, you got some great parents, and they're going to be awesome. Um, and now we go back to Tatooine. Um, again, Kenobi kind of, cleans up the cave and it's basically I'm, I'm out uh he thinks about not taking a toy the t16 but he does um and then he brings it to owen owen and kenobi have this short conversation about he just you're right he just needs to be a boy he's in good hands helping to be good um and basically kenobi accepts like he should be just a normal dude. Like, let him have life. Let him have fun. Um, right before he departs, Owen's like, hey, you want to meet him? And, of course, we get the infamous hello there, which was awesome. And then, um, the, the moment I've been waiting for the whole time. We got Qui Gon Jinn. So, as he's approaching Beggar's Canyon, the Force Ghost of his late master, Qui Gon Jinn, shows up. It's super cool. He um, just basically says, "Hey, how, 
how did you show up here? And he's like, well, I've been waiting for you, dude. You just couldn't see me. And um, he basically ends with like, hey, we got a lot of work to do. Let's get going. Let's figure this out together. Um, and I just love it so much. He's, um, we got a ways to go is really what he kind of ends with. And um, it's so true. It was so cool seeing Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon and just again just wish it was a little bit longer and then they kind of depart in to beggars canyon and that's where the two journey you know ends and then roll credits i think again deborah chow did an amazing job directing but i think this this series suffered with just a little bit of writing issues and and again i think it's just the pacing i really enjoyed like the overall feel and there was really good elements i just felt like we should have got a little bit more depressed obi-wan and that would help the impact here later um and again i just think little bits like show me a little bit more of luke and, and and beru and lars like let them have those kind of family moments um it even be cool again showing them at the table having dinner at the table just a little bit more would have been cool because you had the dinner at a new hope we had the dinner table in attack of clones we saw a little bit of that of rise of skywalker it's just been really cool to kind of have a dinner moment of like brew making food i don't know these are just weird little things that would have been just super cool to see and just show again like it's poetry it rhymes it would just be really cool to see all that and they just didn't do that um i just think there's some misses there but overall really like the finale again just wish it was a little bit longer we're getting good star wars it just could be better but there you have it super awesome what do you guys think let us know drop us a you know drop us something and we'll definitely read it on an upcoming episode um so there you go main topic holla all right so we've been doing what's happening when it's episode 107 we got to talk about 2007 let's see what's going on big thing george lucas is the grand marshal of the 2000 terminator roses parade that was a big deal bunch of stormtroopers from all over the world join george on that and it was really cool you can find the documentary on the star wars blu-ray which is something cool about that mm. this is fun february 19th of 2007 wikipedia star wars merchandise wiki is found what the heck that is awesome um so let's see here what else we got um the book in april making of star wars the definitive story behind the original film is released which is super cool um a bunch of comics celebration four held in la in california may 24th through the 28th that is cool uh i remember the show star wars tech and star wars the legacy revealed was on the history channel that was super cool um oh my gosh june 17th robot chicken star wars aired oh, love me some star wars robot chicken so good um let's see who else star wars battlefront Re Reganate, renegade squadron open up in october that's a great game i think that was for the psp i don't think that was okay november 6 lego star wars the complete saga another great lego game is there loved it so good um so yeah and then ha a wonderful book highly recommend it even though it's technically not canon anymore that's okay darth bane 
Rule of Two is released. Great book in December of 26. And there you go. That is 2007. Super fun book. Super fun year. Super awesome to see Celebration 4. All those great things and really good stuff there. All right. Well, uh, thanks for listening to a special episode of Big T and Little T, a Star Wars podcast. Um, again, appreciate you. You can find us on the socials, Big T, Little T podcast, Instagram, B L I L T podcast on Twitter and twitch.tv forward slash big T little T. We've been playing a lot of Fortnite. Just got to get Fortnite trying to get to level 90 to get the Darth Vader skin. And we got a long way ahead of us, but we're late on the game, but that's okay. Um, we hate, we don't hear from you. We got some stickers. We got to send some swag your, your way. So comment, tweet, rate us on Apple podcast. Email us at BigTLittyPodcast gmail.com. You can drop us a question, give us a rating, and we'll send you a sticker. Hey, we're, we're found at bio.link forward slash big t little t. Find us all there. Um, hey, rate us on Good Pods. We're making some traction there. Um, we just had a great episode, cross episode of the Geeky uh, Dad podcast. We had a, so much fun with Raphael. So check that out. That just dropped on Father's Day. So there you have it. Um, next time, I think we'll be breaking down the whole thing with Trent. It's going to be so much fun. Um, so now remember, truly wonderful the mind of a child is. And may the force be with you always. Bye. Talk to you later. Bye, bye, bye. Bye. <laughs>